Good afternoon to my fellow engineers. This is going to be the first of the five videos in the Solid Edge Intermediate Pack. Um, previously there was the Solid Edge Basics Pack, which just gave you a general overview of what Solid Edge was, what it could do, a quick layout of some of the parts that you could make, um, and some of the features that you could do, some of the simple features that you could do. Um, in this video we're just going to be looking at, um, well, sorry, in this uh, pack we're going to be looking at some of the more advanced things that you could do, some of the more interesting ways that you can create create objects and therefore some of the more interesting objects that you can make and then we're going to end up by uh, looking at some more um, uh, detailed drawings so uh, as I said there's going to be five videos in the first video we're going to have a quick look at um, revolving and sweeping and we're going to look at that in the second video we are going to be looking at uh, rib networks um, and web networks in the third video we're going to be making some more complex parts um, and more complex assemblies um, so in the third video, I think it was on the uh, on the basic pack, um, we made some parts to be used in an assembly, and then in the fourth video from the basic pack, we actually made the assembly. We're going to be making an assembly as well in the third third video of the um, intermediate pack, um, but it's going to be a little bit more complex and use some uh, niftier tricks. Uh, in the fourth video in the intermediate pack, we're going to be looking at exploded views and detailed drawings. Um, so uh, that's tagging off the fifth video from the basics pack which was detailed drawings. It's going to be the fourth video in the intermediate pack. It's going to be some more advanced detailed drawings there. And then in the very final video in the intermediate pack, this very final one, is just going to be looking at some surfaces, which are basically just, they're, they're like 2D sheets in a 3D environment. Um, you know, uh, infinitesimally small, or th sorry, thin sheets, like a piece of paper, as it were, being folded up in certain ways. Um, not to be confused with sheet metal, but you'll you'll see what I mean when I get onto that video. So as I said, in this very first video, we're going to be making some. Um, uh, we're going to be using revolving, revolve cutting, sweeping, um, and we're also going to introduce ourselves to edge rounding and angle measurements. So if you've uh, covered that stuff before, then just skip on ahead. If you haven't, if you've got no idea what half that stuff is or any of that stuff is, uh, I'd recommend you watch this one. This one here. So obviously we've got solid edge open. Um, we're going to start by uh, going into our part, so we're going to be making a part this uh, this video. We're not going to be using the assembly or the draft files at all. So a very very quick reminder what we did last uh, in the last few videos. We looked at the um, in the basics pack. We looked at extruding. We looked at cutting. Um, we looked at chamfering. We looked at using the hole command um, just to make a hole that goes all the way through an object. Uh, we looked at the um, smart dimension, which just allows you to choose a, a single line and, and change its dimensions. And then we looked at the distance between, which we used in both uh, the uh, part environment and we looked at in the draft environment. And then the only other thing that we really did was we looked at some of the views um, and we changed some of the uh, material properties just to give it some colour. We didn't actually use any of the material properties. We didn't you know, use its density or, or its, um, any of its physical uh, properties. So in this video, we're going to be using um, the uh, revolving command the revolve cutting command here um, and we're going to be using the sweep command here okay so we'll just uh, dive right in so we're going to start with revolving if we uh, it works in a very similar way to extrusion so you uh, select your revolve command and it says first of all the, the first step that you've got to do here is you need to um, select a plane you need to say right what is the plane that we're going to be drawing on um, and then what are we going to be what are we going to what area are we going to be revolving around so we'll just make it nice and easy and we'll start with the XZ plane. Um, and what I want to revolve around is a circle. So if you just imagine a donut shape, um, if you take a 2D slice of that, um, if you just take a slice out, it's a, just a circle that's been revolved around the very middle of the donut, the axis of the donut, which is exactly what we're going to be making here. So we're just going to, um, the first thing that we're going to do is just we're going to draw our axis so we just draw a line out. Um, it doesn't matter what length the axis is, um, but just because I like numbers, I'm going to call it 120. It doesn't matter what it is, but it has to be, um, uh, it's going to be the axis that you're going to be moving around. Then this second line that I'm drawing is just going to be a construction line. We're going to get rid of this later on. But it tells us how far we want our um, circle to be from the uh, center. So I'm just going to say, um, I'll have 120. Okay, and then finally we're just going to, um, or next rather, we're going to put in um, this circle by point. Um, I think we used circle by point to make a, um, a hole in the last uh, 
in part three. So if you don't know how to do that, then um, but we're going to do circle by point. Select the point that we want to be the middle of our point. And then we uh, set the diameter or radius of the circle. Um, and to make it look like a donut, I'm going to make it um, 120. Okay. Now we need to get rid of this line, because I said that was just a construction line. We didn't actually need that at all. That was just so that we could set the point. An alternative way of doing it would be to um, select the centre of that, and then the centre of that. And then that's 120. And we obviously want that to be 120, so we're not going to change that dimension at all. So now what we've got here at the minute is we've got our circle. This is the shape that we want to revolve around. If I just rotate this, we're going to rotate this around this axis. But at the minute, this is just a line. This is just a, um, it's just like a construction line that's not really actually doing anything. If I were to close this now, it would say, hold on, you know, you've just got a shape and a line. That, that, that means nothing. We actually need to say this is our revolving line. So if we go up to the draw command, all of these stuff, we've looked at a little bit of, of this stuff before, and this is just um, uh, actually drawing stuff. These are manipulations, which we're going to probably look at a lot later on. And then these things here are the things that um, assign things. You know, we, we, we can say this is actually representative of this or so forth. So we need to say that we want this line to be an axis of, of revolution. So we're going to use this shape and we're going to revolve it around this axis. So if we select the axis of revolution, it's this one here that I'm pointing at. So it's saying, right, okay, now you need to select what axis, you know, what line is going to be your axis. So we're going to select this axis. And as you can see, the line is now dotted along. Basically that says it's no longer a construction line. Now it is something, it's an axis. So we're going to revolve this shape around this axis. Right, that's the only change we need to make. So we're going to go ahead and close that sketch. Okay, and what you can see now in the uh, dynamic environment is that this shape is now revolving. This area is now revolving around this axis, exactly like that. Okay, so. What we're going to do at the minute, we just want to set it to um, a random angle. Obviously, to make it a donut, we'd set it to 316. You just type in 360. But I'm going to set it to a random angle. So uh, it's 289.13. Okay, and we'll just finish that there. Okay, say I didn't know what that angle was. I didn't know what that angle, you know, I uh, didn't know it was 289.13 degrees. I'm sure some of you want to convert that to radians. Um, and I, but I want to find out. Instead of going uh, into the, the shape and doing it like that, we can set a new dimension. So in the basics pack, we looked at smart dimensioning, which if I choose a smart dimension, I can select, for example, the circle and say, right, that's 120 degrees. Uh, so 120 uh, millimeters is the diameter of the circle. We selected, we found the distance between. So we can say, okay, well, we want the distance between the center point of that and the, 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 um, that axis there, for example. Okay, well that's 120 degrees, so that's useful. And the um, so that you know we've got the we've got the diameter and we've got um, a distance, but we need to know the angle. And technically, you could work out you know the x y uh, sorry the x z um, distance of that and then the x y z distance of that, and you could do some trigonometry and you could work out technically the distance between their center point of there and center point of there, and because you know the parameters, you could find out the angle between. But obviously there's going to be a smarter way of doing that. So if you go up to the distance between, and you choose the one just beneath it, it says angle between. So if you select that, and now we can select our two faces that we want to know the angle between, and it tells us what that angle is. I'm just going to remove this, so that you can see a little better. So it's saying that that's 70.87 degrees, that angle which is um, 360 degrees minus uh, 200 and um, was it 98.23 uh, it was. But so that, that tells us the angle between which will actually be quite useful. We'll be using that as well in the detailed drawings in um, uh, the fourth video. But that's quite a useful uh, characteristic. If I just want to um, change this uh, so that it is a complete donut, 
then if we just uh, edit the definition, change the revolving extent step, we can go back to. So if you select on any of these, we can say, right, I want this to be, I want to change this section or I want to change this section. So this was the plane, change the plane that it was on, we can change the drawing profile or we can change the angle. So I'm just going to type in 360 degrees. So now it makes our, our nice perfect toroid. And that's it. Okay. The next thing I'm going to do, um, this is now breaking it away from being a donut. I'm going to use the revolving cut command. Okay, we're going to select the same plane that we chose last time. And now what we can do with the revolving cut command, it works exactly the same way. It's cutting to extruding as revolving cut command is to the revolving command. It's very simple. So, same as before, we're going to set this as our axis. And then we're going to draw, I'm personally, I've decided to draw just a circle up here, which we'll say is going to be 60. We need to um, assign that as our axis again, so we need to go up to the axis of revolution assignment and assign that as our axis. And then we can close that sketch. Okay, and then just like the cutting command, it's just going to cut like so. Okay, and now it looks, I don't know, maybe like a pulley or something. Um, you know, if, if you had, a, if you had a, a rod through here, it could act like a, a cable pulley or something. That'd be quite useful. Um, but obviously we've got this really, uh, you know, jagged edge, which would um, cut into the wire. Perhaps if this was made of steel, it would probably be made of plastic. But we've got this jagged edge, which is quite unpleasant, and we want to get rid of it. So previously, in the last uh, the last video, we would have used the chamfer command. So I'll just uh, show you what that did again. Just remind you. So the chamfer command would taper off a little bit of it. Okay. And it would do it so that it was a 45 degree angle um, down this axis and down this line as well. Um, and it would make it so that the step was 4 millimeters that way and 4 millimeters that way. But we don't want the um, chamfer command. It doesn't look quite as neat. So I'll just get rid of these dimensions because these the, these dimensions have changed. So I'm just going to get rid of these. But I'm just going to delete that chamfer command. And instead we're going to use the round. So I showed you, I think I mentioned the round. I don't think I used it in the end um, in the previous videos. So if we set our round to say uh, 12 millimeters, right? We can now round it. Okay, so that green line is where the edge met to before, and now our round makes it a lot smoother. It cuts off a little section, almost like a revolving cut around. So now it looks like a space hopper with a hole in it, or you know, it, it looks more like a pulley, and it looks a little bit safer and clean to use. So, very quick summary, we use the um, revolve to make the shape, which was the actual protrusion. Then we use the revolve cut. Um, then we use the uh, revolve cut to actually cut this section, and then we use the round to kind of straighten off the edges. So like smooth off the edges as well, so it's a lot cleaner. So I'm just going to get rid of that, because you guys know how to do all that. If you want to Watch it again, watch it again. And now I'm going to be introducing you to the sweep command. Okay. Let's get back onto the front. So to do a sweep command, we're going to, um, we're not actually going to dive right into the sweep, which is here. We're going to draw what we want to sweep. So we need to kind of invite ourselves into a new, um, a new way of thinking. In the extruding, extrusions, cutting, revolving, revolve cutting, um, the way it worked is we said, right, I want to choose this plane, I want to draw this step, I want this step to follow this, and we did it all under kind of one continual process. What we're going to do is we're going to take those first two steps, so we're going to say, this is the plane, this is the drawing, and then after that we're going to say, right, sweep this, I want to sweep this shape along this step. Okay? So we need to choose, we need to design what shape we're going to, um, what shape we're going to actually uh, uh, kind of sweep along. So 
the way we're going to do that is we go up to here and we press on the sketch command, which just uh, it allows you to do that very first stage um, in the extrusion cutting and so like commands. Um, it just it allows you to, to select a plane. So we're going to select a plane to begin with. And now we need to uh, decide what shape we're going to do. And just for simplicity, I'm going to do a rectangle by two points. And I'm just going to make a 80 by 60 rectangle. And that's gone off the screen a little bit. I didn't want that angle. Okay, so this is the shape that we're going to be extruding along. Now, what we need to do is we, we want a line or a sweep going kind of uh, in this YZ direction because we want it to follow that sort of path. But we obviously can't draw a line in this YZ direction um, at all because we are existing only in this two dimensional XZ plane. We can't have any influence of what happens in the Y plane at the minute. So we're going to close the sketch. That is going to be now. This now is our um, is the shape that we're going to extrude along. Now, if we select the Y Z plane, and we're going to, we're still on sketch, so we're going to draw another sketch, and we're going to draw a shape that we wanted to follow. Um, if you were just making a bar, and you for some reason didn't want to use the extrude command, you could just draw a straight line now, and it would follow the same logic as a bar. But instead, what I'm going to do is, if you just select curve here, it's kind of like um, uh, freehand sketching. There is a freehand sketching command, but it's very similar to freehand sketching. So you just select. You've got to you've got to assign it to a corner. So we're assigning it to that bottom corner, which we used as the center point um, of the axes. And we're just going to make some funky curve for it to follow. And what I'm also going to do while I'm here is I'm going to draw a circle where the uh, tangent of the circle meets up with that rectangle. Okay, So I want it to be uh, 400, now nah, we'll make it 200. Perfectly downwards. And then we're going to just make our circle. And we obviously want that circle to hit right onto the um, center point. Get rid of that construction line. Okay, um, and you'll see what I'm doing here, but basically we're taking this shape, this shape here, and first of all we're going to extrude it along here, and make it, see, see what that looks like, and then we're going to do it around this, this curve here. So we're going to do it in two separate processes, um, and just, just to give you an idea of, of what you can do there. So we've drawn, we've drawn our shape, which we want to go this way, you know, to, to follow to this area. And we, we said, right, we're going to do it. We're going to do two different sweeps. We're going to, we want to, to go along this line here. And then after that, or delete that line, and we're going to go along this line here. And then we're going to look what, see, see what we can make with that. So we, now we need to go to our sweep protrusion. You'll see this box here to see, to, to do what we're going to be doing, you don't need to change anything. You want it on single pit, single path and cross section, no merging, no alignments, you know, um, continuous. So you, you just want it on its default setting. You need to be on single path and cross section for this to work. So now we're going to press OK. So the first thing you do is you select what uh, the line is going to be. So the line that we're going to be using can either be the uh, the sweep or it can be this circle. So as I said, we're going to start with the sweep. So we select that and we say, right, that's the line that we're going to be using to uh, protrude along. So we press green, the, the green arrow, which basically means, right, done that one, next. Now we have to select the area that we want to protrude along. So we're going to select our rectangle and it's going to make this sweep for us. So it looks like, um, uh, you know, like, a, like a bar that's melted and it's starting to to drop or droop or something. And we finish that and we can just do that. Okay? So that's what the sweep command does and that's really useful for making handles, um, for you know shopping carts or it's, it's really useful for making intricate shapes. I'm just going to press Control Z to go back 
and then I'm just going to quickly show you what happens if we do it along this circle here. So single path again. Choose the um, uh, circle this time. And then choose the shape. And now we've made a hoop. Okay? And it looks relatively similar to the thing that we made earlier on in Revolve. Now, last time, when we, now when we made the, um, the hoop in Revolve, and bear in mind, obviously, if we did, if we did do this with Revolve, instead of using a circle and then a cut, we could have just used a square. It would have worked exactly the same way. But this is, this is, um, a good example of how you can, uh, use two different functions to make the same, uh, uh, shape. And as I said, when I was making these curves, if I had just drawn a straight line, it would have been exactly the same as the extrude command. And the same can be said um, with the cut commands and the revolve cut commands as well. So with the uh, revolve command, we said, right, we want this. If, you know, if you imagine the revolve command for the, for the square instead, say so I've got this square and I want to do this line down here, and we're going to revolve around this line. However, what I've done now is I've said, oh, well, I've got this circle here, and I want to revolve through, you know, following this circle. So those are the two different ways that you can make um, effectively the same the same product, and, and you can sweep them along and make quite uh, some quite intricate shapes of them. So um, that basically just uh, wraps off the, this video. I've just got an interesting question. Um, based on what we've learned so far using um, ba the basics pack and what we've done here, uh, just try and think of all the ways that you can uh, make a perfect sphere, a perfect ball, um, and I'll. I'll uh, reveal the answer in the next video um, of how you can make a perfect sphere or a perfect ball. So uh, that rounds up. We've looked at uh, revolving, revolve cutting, sweeping, and to do the sweeping, we've looked at sketching. And then the new dimension that we introduced was the uh, the angle dimension, the angle between here. So anyway, that wraps it up.